Hello everybody and welcome to the Real Estate Walk and Talk. We are on site today for a live walking tour through a new property that just became available for our JWB clients. It's this home right behind me here, 4642 Lenox Avenue, here in Murray Hill, here in uh, beautiful Jacksonville. And uh, we're gonna give you a little bit of the background story here on this home, uh, on Lenox. I'll give you some of the numbers here and then we're gonna do the tour and then we're gonna take a deeper dive into the numbers. Um, so this home has estimated returns of about eight and a half percent, which is fantastic, right in line with our seven to nine percent returns that our assets will produce um, near the higher end there, which is always great. $200 a month of estimated cash flow and a purchase price of 195,000. And so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments here try to get to your questions. Um, we're doing more of these kind of on-site tours here, breaking down the actual properties because you guys are asking for it. We were on the Not Your Average Investor show yesterday and had a great chat as we were kind of walking through and using these properties as teaching moments for how to uh, help you ask the right questions before you make your investment decisions and know why you're doing what you're doing. So um, you can always join us on our show. It's every Tuesday and Thursday at 12.30 Eastern. You can register at JWB Show. And if you want to inquire about purchasing this property, you can do that too. You can go to chatwithjwb.com and speak with my team and maybe add it to your portfolio. All right, so let me give you a little bit of the background here on Lenox Avenue here. So I'm gonna, so this is, this is just one home that we built uh, in 2017, but I'm gonna show you what's next to it actually. This was a larger parcel of land that we divided and actually built five homes on it. So hang with me here in a second. All right, so this is the home here on, uh, on Lenox that we're talking about, 4642 Lenox. And, uh, but take a look right over here, right next to it. Looks sort of similar, right? Well, we built that one, right? This is the one that we're talking about here on 4642. And then there's 40, 40, 4646 Lenox, which we also built. And that's also rented right now, and it's a cash flowing asset. And then there's 4650 Lenox which we also built and is rented and is a cash flowing asset. And then here we've got 4654. So this has been a really successful project and this is pretty typical for what we'll do here at JWB. All right, we're what's known as an infill builder, right? We buy the lots that the big builders don't wanna do because they're too small or maybe that other real estate investors just can't handle because they're too hairy, they don't know how to figure it out. And, uh, and we turn it into to great assets like this. So this was a large parcel of land divided into five homes and in 2017, we built it. Um, so you may be asking yourself, well, why, why are we selling it now, right? We sold these other ones earlier. Why are we selling this one later? Well, you're just gonna have to stay tuned here to the walk and talk as I use that as an opportunity to show you a little something that we do to make sure we take care of clients. So something else to show you guys, you know, one of the ways that we're really great at renting out homes is our ability to have self-guided showings, which is this little code box here. Um, so especially during coronavirus time, it became incredibly important for people to be able to have self-guided showings, but we've been doing this for many, many years. And so if you're a resident and you wanna rent a home with JWB, you don't have many obstacles to be able to do that that other property management companies create just by simply showing the home and meeting you at the home and even talking to you about the home, right? You know, a lot of people wanna get their information online right now, see pictures, be able to go and actually see the home if, if they're interested. So we have the system that we've invested in um, over, over many years and made a huge upgrade to it, kind of Q4 of last year. And it allowed people basically to seamlessly go from seeing the home online and any of our marketing channels and then uh, actually uh, having a qualification process submitting documentation, and then actually getting able to, being able to see the home for themselves. Um, and welcome everybody who's walking with me here. What we're doing is a walking tour of a turnkey property uh, on Lenox Avenue. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through the house in just a second. We're gonna review the numbers and then break down the cash flow and the returns. Um, so anyways, a really great investment for JWB that's really helping our clients, driving down our days on market keeping our number of homes on the market for rent extremely low. I checked the other day, we had 63 homes on the market and we managed over 3,500. That's over a 98% occupancy rate. 
incredible. And the number continues to go down. And part of it's because of these investments we make in technology uh, and self-guided showings, which, you know, during coronavirus, now, wow, what would we do without that? Um, all right, so let's, let's do this little walking tour here. Then we're gonna take a look at the numbers. I see we got Bill Oxley watching. We got Dom Felix watching. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, you're welcome, Bill, for doing the walk and talks, man. I appreciate you being here. Uh, you make it fun, my friend. So um, I'm gonna take a little walk inside the house here. This is a four bedroom, two and a half bath home. So walking in here, you'll see the half bath right off the bath there. Um, two stories, of course. So we'll go upstairs here in just a second. But you can see why this home rented very quickly. This rent, home rented in uh, 22 days and it has a two year lease signed on it and the resident will be moving in very shortly here. And so you'll see some really nice amenities here for a brand new construction rental home. You got you know, obviously granite countertops. That's not something you normally see. You got a two car garage, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. And you know, I feel a little bit like a normal realtor just showing you all the amenities of the house. <laughs> but uh, it's nice for you guys to get a viewpoint. You know, the most important thing when you're making your decision on a home, of course, are the numbers. And that's where we're gonna spend you know, the majority of our time here today. Um, and so we're walking upstairs now here. Appreciate you guys being with me. I see some new additions to the walk and talk here. We're doing a uh, live tour of a new property that JWB is just releasing for purchase for our clients. It's cash flowing $200 a month and uh, about eight and a half percent return on investment estimated here. So we're upstairs now. I'm gonna walk into the master first. So, you know, you'll notice the flooring. We do that on purpose. It's luxury vinyl plank flooring. It's not carpet. If you have carpet in your rental properties, guess what's gonna happen? It ain't gonna last. You're gonna have to spend a lot of money to replace it, right? Even if you have, you know, just one spot, you have to replace the whole carpet in a room, right? It's just not a great thing to do as a rental property investor. So JWB spends more money right off the bat in order to uh, make sure your maintenance costs are lower on the back end. So see, we've got Aaron Compton jumping in here. Good buddy of mine has been reaching out to me and letting me know about his real estate investing journey. Appreciate you being here. Here's our, here's our uh, full bath up top here as well. Um, and then we've got this is our third bedroom. Kind of walk in here. Boom, 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 boom. And Bill says, I like this type of walk and talks the best, showing examples of the rental portfolio. I appreciate the feedback, Bill. And that's actually the, a lot of the feedback we've been getting. Uh, we had a great show yesterday. Uh, at 1230, we do our, our uh, real estate walk and talks. Oh, no, I'm sorry. At 1230 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do the Not Your Average Investor show. And so we kind of kicked off the show just using this one of our available properties as a teaching moment for everybody on the show. And we just had a ton of questions. So we're going to keep doing more and more of that. And um, I think it's great just to see the real asset and kind of get away from maybe some of the theory or mix some of the theory into the discussion, but actually being able to see, you know, a real asset. So that's what we're going to do. And welcome everybody who's just joining us now. We're doing a walk and talk on a live tour of an asset that JWB just made available for sale uh, here at 4642 Lenox Avenue in Murray Hill in Jacksonville. And now let's take a look at the numbers here. All right, so we're going old school. I'm showing you the computer screen, but here's the breakdown of the numbers here on Lenox Avenue. So you can see purchase price of 195,000, four beds, two and a half baths, two, a, two car garage, you see your estimated rent range there of $13.99 to $14.49. And right below that, you see a lease of two years at $14.24. As I mentioned, this home is already rented, which is awesome for you as an investor because you're cash flow positive from day one. The resident will be moving in very shortly. And they're already signed up for a long-term lease because long-term leases are great for you as an investor because the greatest determinant of your success in a rental property is how long your tenant is staying and how long are they paying you rent because that decreases your maintenance cost and it decreases your vacancy cost. Um, you see 14.24 there. This home is actually rented at an average rent of 14.24 over the first two years. The first year is 13.99, the second year is 14.49. We get a $50 rent increase in the second year. And so your average lease, uh, or average rent rate is gonna be 14.24 on this. 
And I think the, one of the great teaching moments on this one is look at that, the property taxes there, $3,598, all right? So your property taxes in Jacksonville, you know, like, uh, like a lot of, uh, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll hesitate there from where I was going there, but I will say property taxes are not an exact science. And, you know, you, we have a lot of data points, but sometimes, you know, the, the taxes just come in higher especially on new construction homes, and I'll kind of take it back here. So especially on new construction homes, you know, if you're investing in new construction, sometimes it's harder for you to know what your property taxes are going to be. So $3,600 a year for taxes in this, uh, in this area is higher than we would have expected. So early on in the walk and talk, and I kind of asked the question of myself, which maybe some of you are asking, is you built this in 2017, Greg, which we did, one of these five homes. Um, why are we selling it now? We built it in 2017. We decided not to sell it in 2017. We rented it in our own portfolio. Well, big reason for that is because every home that we sell to clients, we must vet out all of the numbers and make sure that it's going to put you in a position to get positive cash flow and to hit that seven to 9% estimated return on investment. And so for this one, the taxes came back at 3,600. That's a lot higher than we would have expected. And what do you think that does to cash flow at that time? Well, it didn't meet our criteria to be able to sell it to a client. So it went into JWB's portfolio, we rented it. Now since then, that resident has moved, right? It's been a number of years that resident has moved and we're re-renting the home. And what do you think has happened to rents since then? They've gone up, gone up substantially. Now we can rent this at an average rent of 1424 which now gets us more positive cash flow for you as a client, which increases your return on investment, which now makes this a great deal. So this is not the case for most investors out there, especially if you're investing in new construction, but also renovations. People go flying blind when they buy properties as far as what property taxes are going to be. I did a walk and talk on this not too long ago, and people are, a lot of times are, are really, they just don't hit their return requirements because of things like taxes. Um, but we do as much as we can to limit that. And this is a great example of one where the plan originally was to sell it, the taxes came back higher than we would have expected, we made a different decision in the best interest of clients, give it a little bit of time, rents go up over time, they did, we're able to rent it out for hire, and now this is a wonderful property for one of our clients to be able to invest in um, here in, here in uh, Murray Hill. All right, I see we got a few more folks Jumping on here, Tara Eggy, a former JWB teammate, is watching. Hope you're doing well, Tara. Scott Slack is watching, and uh, Bill asks, but did the property taxes go up as well? Well, they went up a little bit, but the huge jump for property taxes happened the first year, right? We were probably expecting maybe somewhere around, I don't know, maybe 2,600 or so for this property, and it came in a lot higher. Now, since 2017, it has gone up a little bit, but it hasn't gone up a lot, right? The big basis, it went up, I don't know what it was in 2017, but call it, it was 3,200 or 3,400 or something. And it's only gone up a little bit since then, but the rents have gone way up and now that gets you the positive cash flow you need. And that is what gets you your uh, higher estimated return on investment. Anything over 7% is what we like to see. And this is eight and a half percent. So there you go. Great question, Bill. Um, all right, so let's take a look. A little bit more at the numbers here. All right, so we've got, we saw that estimated annual property taxes of, of, of $3,600 there. Your homeowner's insurance, under $500 a year for homeowner's insurance. You guys should be saying, wow, that is incredibly low. Uh, and it is. And that is a credit to new construction. It's a credit to our insurance teammate, Whitney Ritchie, and the Ritchie Insurance Group, who we love. Uh, who's commonly uh, jumping in on the, on the Not Your Average Investor show in the comments. And so we'll give her some love there. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's new construction as well. Um, when you have new construction homes, the building codes are better over the years and it's less of a risk to the insurance company and you get lower premiums. So it's incredible. Uh, no homeowners association dues there. And then let me see if I can bring this down here. Year built 2017, square footage 1752 and it's uh, on city sewer there. All right, so now we're looking at our returns on investment here, and I'm just gonna focus in on the $200 and the 8.5% returns there. 
that's what I'm quoting, assuming that you're buying this property with conventional financing. Um, those other returns that you see there, the, the top two is if you're buying with cash, so $940 a month is what you'd receive on a normal month if you were buying with cash, about a five and a half, five and a six, five point six percent return there. And then the middle one, $129 a month in cash flow, 1.42% return is if you're buying with a non-recourse loan. That would be if you're buying properties in your retirement accounts. All right, and then lastly here, we've got our property assumptions. What are we assuming for vacancy, maintenance, and appreciation? Vacancy is 2%, maintenance cost is 4%, and we don't factor in property appreciation. We definitely could. Jacksonville is a growth market here, but we choose not to. We wanna be conservative um, because you do need to hold on for a full market cycle. That's why I advise folks to get into rental properties and plan to hold for a market cycle of at least 10 to 20 years and uh, then you can count on home price appreciation. Um, so, but we go really conservative. Now, vacancy and maintenance costs on the show yesterday, folks asked me to, to clarify how you, what, what does 2% and 4% mean? You basically take the percentage of the rents that you can collect each year. So if you wanted to do some quick math, the, uh, the lease on this one is that, you know, 1424 right there. You multiply that times 12, and then you'd take 2% of that, and that is what you should be estimating in terms of lost rent due to vacancy. And the same thing for maintenance cost. You'd take the 1424 times 12, and if anybody's, you know, follow along at home, I don't have enough hands to do the calculator with me right now, but Bill, why don't you throw 1424 times 12, tell me what that is, and then tell me what 4% of that new number is. And that's how much you should set aside an expected maintenance cost on an annual basis. Um, and that's how you, you, uh, you calculate that. All right, and you know what? I know it's already calculated for us, so let me go ahead and do that. So your maintenance number is actually going to be $684 for a year. All right, that's what you should basically set aside for maintenance costs. That is 4% of the rents for the entire year. And how do we get those numbers, 2% and 4%? Well, we track this stuff. We've tracked every dollar in and every dollar out for our clients since 2011. Over 2,000 rental properties sold to clients that we now manage. And we've tracked every dollar in and every dollar out. So you're gonna see different vacancy and maintenance costs, expectations for new construction than you will for renovations. This is all about setting you up for success. This is what you should be doing, what you should be requiring to know your numbers are strong before you buy a cash flowing rental property, right? It's amazing. If you estimate, you know, 4% for maintenance cost from some other provider and their real maintenance costs are 10%, there goes your positive cash flow. There goes your, a lot of your return on your investment. And probably there goes your positive feelings about this investment because now you're having to pay money into the investment every single month than getting positive cash flow. So make sure that you know your numbers if you're working with a turnkey company that they know their numbers forwards and backwards on the specific type of asset. One of the questions on the show yesterday was should uh, for um, a septic, a property that's on septic, should I expect higher maintenance cost and is it still a good investment? And my answer to that was yes and yes, right? We look at renovations that have septic tanks and over time we see that they just have more maintenance costs. The figure is actually 9% for maintenance costs on renovation properties, uh, which is much different than 4% and that's just the reality of it. So now we factor that into your return evaluation. We have to buy that deal in the beginning, making sure that the numbers can work with 9% maintenance costs and still hit seven to 9% estimated returns on investment for you. So it's harder for us, we know it going in, and then for you, you're gonna know it as well. And you're gonna expect 9% maintenance costs, and if we hit that, we're still going to hit roughly the same returns as if you were investing in a new construction property that had 4% maintenance costs. So you gotta know your numbers, it can be make it or break it for you on your turnkey rental property portfolio. And welcome everybody who's walking with me here. I hope you guys are appreciating the, um, the walk and talks. Um, been getting good positive feedback on doing this live in an actual asset, in an actual rental property. You know, JWB renovates 
about 700 properties a year and builds about 400 properties a year. So, you know, I can do this as often as you guys want. <laughs> kind of getting into the mode of probably once a week. And I think we're going to feature them on our Not Your Average Investor show as well and use these as teaching moments um, for you guys to learn. I'd say that the two teaching moments from today are the property taxes. You have to make sure you have a handle on what property taxes are going to be. And it's hard to do for new construction. In this home, we built it in 2017. The taxes came in higher than we wanted. Didn't hit our cash flow and return requirements for a client. So we held on to it. Rents have gone up and now it meets our requirements for you as a client. And now you're going to be in a great spot to buy this one. And uh, the other one is knowing your maintenance cost. Right, 4% maintenance costs on new construction is what we've proven over the years. Um, but for renovations, you're going to see slightly higher estimates for renovation costs. And that's okay because at the end of the day, all of the assets, whether new construction or renovations, are going to hit that 7 to 9% threshold. So if this is something you're interested in, you can reach out to my team. You can go to chatwithjwb.com, jump on the phone with the mics. We have two sales guys, both are named Mike, which you will love, makes it easy for everybody. And um, if you wanna see more of this, we're gonna be highlighting these more in our, in our show, uh, which is every Tuesday and Thursday, the Not Your Average Investor show. Uh, you can jump on live, ask questions, see the properties that are there um, that we are gonna take a deep dive into and you can register at jwbshow.com. Appreciate you guys being with me and I hope you have a great rest of the rest of the day and a great weekend. And we'll see you guys later. Take care.